Okay, I'm trying to get this certain sound, but I have to put the... It's, I'm, okay. You know what I think? I put that that bootleg of the soundboard Randy Rhodes' Diary of Man Man Tour up. The best quality out there. That was actually mastered by a guy at A&M. And I got like 400 people have watched it since Friday night. Well, Saturday morning when I re-put it, reposted it. 400! And I put it to all these Randy Rhodes tributes. You know what that says to me? Even though my highest viewed video is a Randy Rose one but it's been on the on YouTube for 11 years 12 years it's got a hundred and something thousand it got a couple hundred thousand I don't know 400 people just over 400 views of this unbelievable treasure of a recording Randy Rhodes on the diary tour just over four now i'm starting to realize why sharon isn't putting anything out she's probably done her homework there's a lot of very passionate randy fans but there's not enough for her to make money because if only 400 and something views and I, you know it should be spreading if he's that still i mean popular there's kids I ask all the time, new guitar players, they don't know who Randy Rhodes is. If I say Crazy Train, they know that song. I go, he wrote that. I go, go back and buy Blizzard of Oz and Diary of a Mad Men and learn what guitar is. But that's that's a pretty big uh, wake up for me. Is like I put that up. It says Randy Rhodes. That's all I have. Randy Rhodes, Kalamazoo, Michigan, 1982 live highest quality that is the best you're gonna get unless Sharon releases it herself and only less than 500 people have watched it in four days there's your answer that's why it's not coming out pretty sure pretty sure if that's not it you tell me hell no one watches my videos <laughs> I'll tell you a story Today I talked to Tracy G, who played with uh, Ronnie James Deal for nine years. Great guitar player. Best, probably, guitarist that he ever had. Uh, we were just talking stuff because we were also in a band together with Mandy Idiot. And uh, Mandy was in his very first band when he first came to America when he was 21 years old. was Trick or Treat. And then he was stole out of Trick or Treat after we just played a sold out show like our third sold out show and he and someone bought him out of the band for five thousand dollars when he was we were gonna go on and do a demo for capital we're sitting at the friggin rehearsal studio waiting for him to show up to do this demo so I can hand him the demo and we can get this capital records deal going and then we were gonna go to Japan with I can't remember what band There's so many bands I don't remember names I just talked to my good friend Dean Kenny the drummer Dude, that guy remembers everything. He must have now had a drink or took any drugs because he's got he remembers everybody's name. He remembered me. It took me a while to remember him. Sorry, Dean. But I was blah, and I was really focused on me, what I was doing. I didn't care what any bands were doing. I didn't care about their names unless they were doing something. I was, you know, they were ripping me off. So there you go. There's your story. I talked to Tracy G today for about an hour, and then I talked to good Dean old Dean Kenny for about two hours or three. A long time. Anyways, I'm trying to get this sound, and I can't, I don't have it, I can't get it with this. It's the EVH Flanja. But let me turn, let's play a little bit, and because I know people like me to talk, so I'm talking. That's what I did. So I talked to Dean Kenny, who's in a several couple bands in the 80s you will all know him should know him I guess and uh, Tracy G who was in World War 3 I'll say it and then Dio and now he's the trait he's got the Tracy G group he's a great guitar player great 
Look him up. Tracy G. Can't, it is not hard to remember. I <laughs> just like Michael D, Tracy G. That's some deep thinking we put into our names. But it worked for the 80s. Ah. <laughs>
subscribe, comment, subscribe, comment, comment, subscribe. Have a nice night or day. Later.